Good evening, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. Let's begin by singing hymn number 10. I'll read the first verse. All power is given unto our Lord. On him we place reliance. With truth from out his sacred word, we bid our foes defiance. With him we shall prevail, whatever may assail. He is our shield and tower. Almighty is his power. His kingdom is forever. Hymn number 10. I'll read from the Bible and correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. 
This week's readings were inspired by the concept of divine authority. The Holy Bible, King James Version. Genesis. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Psalms. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Matthew. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, and as, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which, if ye tell me, in likewise I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did not ye then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. 
Mark. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway, on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was one in their synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. John. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Mark. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Luke. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Romans. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Mark. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized, with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Psalms, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Colossians, 
that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. First Timothy, I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. First Peter. The God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Mind is the grand creator, and there can be no power except that which is derived from mind. If mind was first chronologically, is first potentially, and must be first eternally, then give to mind the glory, honor, dominion, and power everlastingly do its holy name. The scriptures say, in him we live and move and have our being. What then is this seeming power independent of God, which causes disease and cures it? What is it but an error of belief, a law of mortal mind, wrong in every sense, embracing sin, sickness, and death. The Bible has been my only authority. I have no other guide in the straight and narrow way of truth. The psalmist said, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. The great truth in the science of being that the real man was, is, and ever shall be perfect is incontrovertible. For if man is the image, reflection of God, he is neither inverted nor subverted, but upright and godlike. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Man is incapable of sin, sickness, and death. The real man cannot depart from holiness, nor can God, by whom man is evolved, engender the capacity or freedom to sin. All that God imparts moves in accord with him, reflecting goodness and power. God fashions 
all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. His birthright is dominion, not subjection. Reflecting God's government, man is self-governed. When subordinate to the divine spirit, man cannot be controlled by sin or death, thus proving our material theories about laws of health to be valueless. Mind is the master of the corporeal senses and can conquer sin, sickness, and death. Exercise this God-given authority. Take possession of your body and govern its feeling and action. Rise in the strength of spirit to resist all that is unlike good. God has made man capable of this and nothing can vitiate the ability and power divinely bestowed on man. Suffering, sinning, dying beliefs are unreal. When divine science is universally understood, they will have no power over man, for man is immortal and lives by divine authority. Entirely separate from the belief and dream of material living is the life divine, revealing spiritual understanding and the consciousness of man's dominion over the whole earth. This understanding casts out error and heals the sick. And with it, you can speak as one having authority. Like the great exemplar, the healer should speak to, to disease as one having authority over it, leaving soul to master the false evidences of the corporeal senses and to assert its claims over mortality and disease. The same principle cures both sin and sickness. Because man-made systems insist that man becomes sick and useless, suffers and dies, all in consonance with the laws of God, are we to believe it? Are we to believe an authority which denies God's spiritual command relating to perfection, an authority which Jesus proved to be false? He did the will of the Father. He healed sickness in defiance of what is called material law, but in accordance with God's law, the law of mind. Jesus said of personified evil that it was a liar and the father of it. Truth creates neither a lie, a capacity to lie, nor a liar. If man would relinquish the belief that God makes sin, sickness, and death, or makes man capable of suffering on account of this malevolent triad, the foundations of error would be sapped and error's destruction ensured. But if we theoretically endow mortals with the creativeness and authority of deity, how dare we attempt to destroy what he hath made? or even to deny that God made man evil and made evil good. If Christianity is not scientific and science is not of God, then there is no invariable law and truth becomes an accident. Shall it be denied that a system which works according to the scriptures has scriptural authority? Think less of the enactments of mortal mind, and you will sooner grasp man's God-given dominion. You must understand your way out of human theories relating to health, or you will never believe that you are quite free from some ailment. 
the harmony and immortality of man will never be reached without the understanding that mind is not in matter. Let us banish sickness as an outlaw and abide by the rule of perpetual harmony, God's law. It is man's moral right to annul an unjust sentence, a sentence never inflicted by divine authority. The Christ was the spirit which Jesus implied in his own statements. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I and my Father are one. This Christ or divinity of the man Jesus was his divine nature, the godliness which animated him. Divine truth, life, and love gave Jesus authority over sin, sickness, and death. The enslavement of man is not legitimate. It will cease when man enters into his heritage of freedom, his God-given dominion over the material senses. Let's pray for the congregation first silently, then repeat together the Lord's Prayer. the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let's sing hymn number 221. 
O Jesus, our dear Master, thy works now understood, reveal their full effulgence through love and brotherhood. Today, Christ's precious science, thy healing power makes plain. With joy may all obey thee and cast out sin and pain. Hymn number 221. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. <coughs> All services are now held online and in person. We thank you for observing social distancing and for wearing a mask. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online for children and teens in either Spanish or English. These free one-hour classes will be held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth for more information on times and classes, please send us an email, thirdchurch at 
thirdchurchnyc.com. Third Church maintains a reading room on the first floor of this building. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study, and all are welcome. Here you may purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international newsweekly, available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Christian Science is practical and it heals. Our meeting is now open for all to share experiences of healing and spiritual insights that prove God's ever presence and power in their lives. If you're listening by telephone and would like to share, press star six and wait until your line is unmuted. Please speak directly into the microphone of your phone and don't use the speaker phone. This way your message will be easier to hear. If you're watching by Zoom, you can either choose the raise your hand icon or simply unmute yourself and speak. Your readings dovetailed nicely with both this week's Bible lesson and last week's. <clears throat> last week's was on Adam and fallen man, and I've <clears throat> said before, it really draws a line in the sand in terms of one's um, uh, belief system, one's understanding of God and spiritual reality. Um, <clears throat> as you repeated tonight, uh, the first chapter of Genesis ends with man's dominion, with man being blessed. Uh, the second uh, is a picture of error throughout. I think that Mrs. Eddy said at some point. <clears throat> the second begins with a mist rising from the earth, mystification, mystery, obscuring, uh, a dim sight, a dim understanding. And at the center of that story is dualism, um, good and evil, which uh, Eve and then Adam believes would be more satisfying than good alone. Um, in the first chapter, man is complete, male and female. In the second chapter, man is incomplete, and woman coming from a rib is incomplete, and they're both in what we call today in a codependency. Um, and we know how that ends usually. Um, but it's this dualism that just really struck me last week so, so strongly uh, that uh, mind is all and matter is nothing. Good is all, evil is nothing. Uh, God uh, does not place a tree of temptation in our lives. That comes from the mist. Um, God does not create an agent of temptation uh, called the serpent. Or in the second uh, section of last week's lesson, when Jesus was baptized, he had to fight Satan, which we might call personal sense uh, I've got this great gift, this great mission, and uh, should I use it for myself? And he really, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days uh, and hungry and tired, but he had that spiritual strength from the baptism and from the dove appearing to say, this is my beloved son, to... Uh, fight down that dualism, fight down uh, that temptation to use good for personal gain. Um, and I like that story because it seems to me the, the thing that really enabled Jesus to, to go forward and to fight off the devil or personal sense was the fact that uh, God said uh, symbolically uh, with the dove, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And 
it's from that basis and from the basis of first, Gen uh, first chapter of Genesis that we work uh, not as sinful mortals. And if there is sin uh, or any error to be overcome in thought, it's not, uh, we don't work within the dualism. Uh, this has taken me a fair amount of time in Christian science to understand. We don't work within the dualism. We don't patch up mortal man. Uh, we are always working out from God to know that man is always immortal. And what needs to be corrected is corrected uh, by spiritual fact, not by tinkering uh, with um, old theology, psychology, biology, etc. So uh, these are very deep lessons and are at the center of our theology. And it's our theology that heals uh, sin, sickness, and death. So thank you for your readings. Sometimes at night we wake up and we worry about things. And it seems like when we do that, we're not fully awake and we're not fully asleep. And it's a time when um, negative thoughts can come in and fear. And um, that happened a couple nights ago, about 3 a.m. And I knew that's what was going on. And I was concerned about a number of things, one of which um, I'm at Hunter College in its finals time, and I had so many things pending. So instead of, well, I did lie there for about 10 minutes worrying about it, but I knew um, that wasn't helping. So I sat up, turned on the light, and just started reading Science and Health. And um, I read until my thought cleared. And um, when my thought cleared, I also had all these ideas how I could clear my calendar of things that didn't have to be done this week or next week that could be put off for two weeks easily so that I could concentrate on my final projects. Um, along with that, um, I'm, I'm working on improving my art, specifically drawing and painting. I do other types of art, but this, this one has really been difficult and it's about observation and seeing. And uh, lately I've just asked God, will you guide me in, in selecting what I choose? Will you guide my hand? Will you guide my eye? If I'm spiritual, then this representing what I see outside on a piece of paper is also spiritual and it's part of my growth. And um, that very next day when I started to draw, instead of saying, I can't do this, I'm no good, this is gonna turn out bad, I'm gonna be embarrassed when I have a critique, I heard myself saying, I like what I'm doing, I'm learning a lot. Um, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about it, I'm getting better. And um, that stuck with me. And so I was grateful for that awakening at night where we can challenge fear and doubt. Um, so I think I got up at three and I had a nice schedule so I could go back to sleep about six and sleep a few more hours. But the very same thing happened the next night. So at three, this time I was worried about a cold sore. And um, I didn't wait around to see to listen to what I could worry about, about this cold sore, and if it were painful or not. Because sometimes even pain seems more uncomfortable when we're in that stage of half asleep, half awake. So I rose immediately, um, turned on my light, and picked up the science and health, and just read, continued reading where I had left off the night before. And it brought my thought to a new space. It brought my thought to a spiritual outlook. And with that, the inflammation of the cold sore dissolved. There was no more. Um, and I continued praying because I, there's a lot going on in the world that needs our prayer. And I prayed for the world and I prayed for the church. And I, I saw in the prayer all of us enfolded in divine light and love. And I was so grateful I could be a part of that. I know many people are praying for the world, for 
its inhabitants, for its survival, um, and for this church, this beautiful church that's um, helping the world grow spiritually. Um, and about 6 a.m. again, I was sleepy, so I, and I had my schedule allowed me to sleep a few more hours, which I was very grateful for. But even if I couldn't, I was grateful for the time to be alone with God, to listen carefully, and to pray. I am very grateful for JSH Online. On there, there is a continuous reading of science and health, and a number of times this week, I carried it around on my tablet, playing as I was in various rooms of the apartment. Tremendous, it was at times when tremendous challenges are seem to be a threat, it's the work is to keep thought focused on on God and the true and all in all and the love. There was also an article that I kept listening to, uh, Undisturbed, by Milton Simon. And in that article, it questions, well, why be disturbed if God is all in all? And I asked myself that question. <laughs> There's no need to be disturbed. There's no need to be fearful. And with, with, with that focus, I began to calm down and to get my thought aligned with God good. So I'm very grateful for your readings and for all of the magazines, Sentinel Journal, Monitor that we have available to help us to keep our thought focused. Thank you for your, your concept of uh, divine authority. Um, uh, when I start my day, I, I look at, um, uh, when, I, I t when I accept tasks, I put the little card down and, and, and mark on it, you know, that this is a professional task or a personal task. And when I write down a professional task, it changes my thinking. Um, I think, well, now I have to think as a professional and deal with this professionally and lay aside uh, the personal sense of what I'm doing and think of it professionally. And, and um, the church rouses us to accept our identity as, as spiritual beings, as spiritual ideas, and to accept the authority uh, that that gives us and to act, act accordingly, just like an actor will assume the character that he's asked to portray and he thinks and acts differently. We think and, di and act differently when we identify ourselves correctly and, and Christian science teaches us how to identify uh, correctly. Um, uh, the previous speaker uh, spoke of um, uh, dealing with thoughts uh, in, at night in, in prayer. And my mother-in-law used to say that she never worried about being awake in the middle of the night, that somebody needed her prayers, and she would dwell there. And, and similarly to, to what the pre previous speaker said, uh, when those times of awake in the night, and I turn to... Uh, uh, it's like digesting all the thoughts of the previous day. And I, I, and I express gratitude for all the ideas and all the solutions that, that come in those hours and, and uh, are, are ready for the, the coming day. And, uh, and I think Christian science teaches us not to, uh, to be uh, overcome or, or not to accept the uh, uh, thoughts that might come that are not godlike, and to see them for what they are and to throw them out is not uh, uh, well authorized. And 
and to and I, I'm just very grateful for the the ideas and the thoughts that come. Uh, thank you for your readings. Thank you. And thanks to all of us for your testimonies, your remarks, and your prayers during this service. Let's conclude by singing hymn number 12. Read, Arise, ye people, take your stand. Cast out your idols from the land. Above all doctrine, form, or creed is found the truth that meets your need. Christ promise stands, they that believe his works shall do, his power receive. Hymn number 12.